Hi, my name is Christoph. I'm part of the Enterprise Platform and Integration Project Chair at the Hasselt Plattner Institute. And I'd like to tell you about our paper, Teaching Agile the Agile Way, Employing Self-Organizing Teams in a University Software Engineering Course. So, traditional lectures and seminars are proven tools to teach factual knowledge and technical skills. However, teaching Agile values in a lecture is hard. In order to include the human aspects of software development, Practical projects were included in software development course design. Krupp and Meyer introduced the Agile Competence Pyramid, shown here, which differentiates various levels of Agile skills. Agile values are considered to be the most important in the model, being here shown at the top, but they are mostly neglected in current course programs. In order to address this issue, we conducted an undergraduate software engineering course at the Hasso Plattner Institute, which combines extensive hands on student projects intensive coaching as well as a minimal amount of theoretical lectures on software development methodologies. One of the core aspects of the course is the focus on communicating the Agile values outlined in the Agile Manifesto through giving students authority, a responsibility for decisions and role assignments. In the rest of this video, we'll present the course design and then describe the surveys that were conducted with students as well as the results. So. The course under study is a final year undergraduate software engineering course in which multiple self-organizing teams of students jointly develop a single software system. Well, they use the Scrum methodology. The goal is to provide students with a project experience that provides real challenges in the context of agile software development, focuses, focusing on empowering students to discover the benefits of agile practices auto autonomously. We encourage students to take ownership of the process and students are consciously allowed to make mistakes and learn from them. Within the project, the custom tailored version of the Scrum process is used as a framework for development efforts. The teams follow the Scrum process as closely as possible, with necessary adaptations being made to account for the fact that students are not full-time developers. Based on the number of attendees, a very number of teams is formed by, are formed by the students, and the teams jointly select one product owner and a Scrum master from among them. Uh, the remainder of the students act as developers. For each sprint, is a planning meeting, weekly scrum meetings, a sprint review, and a retrospective meeting are organized by the students and performed in the presence of a tutor. The teams schedule these meetings autonomously, and student working time is supposed to be limited to eight hours a week, um, so daily stand-up daily stand meetings are replaced by weekly versions. Two weeks prior to the project start, the, peer, the product owners meet with the customer and discuss initial requirements. The customer in our setup is a member of the teaching team, who has intricate knowledge of the problem domain and represents the gathered requirements of stakeholders. Under guidance by the teaching staff, the teams then themselves consequently fill the product backlog, and each team performs a sprint planning meeting in the presence of tutors to decide on the sprint backlog and identify potential dependencies to other teams. After two to three weeks of development, a sprint review and retrospection concludes the sprint. In our experience, the tutor role works best if understood as a consultant working with the team rather than a teacher. The tutor can encourage Scrum Masters to actively lead meetings, for example. Surveys were conducted with all participants of the course. Two distinct surveys were employed. First of all, the Sprint Survey, a survey that tracked the key aspects of Agile practices. And uh, these surveys were conducted at the end of each sprint directly after the team's sprint retrospective, but before the sprint planning meeting at the next iteration. And secondly, the feedback surveys, which were uh, surveys tracking students' perceptions of the course in retrospective, measuring satisfaction with the overall course and its design. So this is uh, the topics of the first sprint survey, which were based on previous work. Using uh, this previous work used a more controlled course setup. So the first question concerned the clarity of requirements in the product backlog. So were the user stories in the backlog clear enough? Um, were the descriptions good? Second one concerned effort estimations. So were the estimates of required work uh, realistic? Third uh, was maintenance of the sprint, sprint backlog. Was it clear how to handle user stories, how to log performed work? The fourth one concerned administrative workload. So does the administrative work called for by Scrum represent a significant additional workload, for example? Five, cooperation with the Scrum Master. Was the cooperation with the Scrum Master adequate and satisfactory? The same goes for cooperation with the product owner and the other team members. And eight, question eight was workload. Was the amount of work required for the project adequate? 
uh, nine was satisfaction with work, where you satisfied with the work of this of the, in the sprint, and number ten was satisfaction with Scrum. So, is the methodology useful? Would you consider it useful? Uh, these uh, uh, questions were always answerable on a five-point Likert scale, and coming to the results that we gathered, uh, the null hypothesis of students having a neutral attitude towards Scrum was rejected in 32 of the 40 question means. In all of these cases, we found positive average ratings. This indicates a positive attitude towards Scrum and its practices. In particular, the average rating for the last question in this table, question 10, asking whether students were satisfied with Scrum and recommend, would recommend it, only sank below a value of 4, which would imply yes, once, after sprint 2. Additionally, we analyzed correlations between responses to questions. So, re significant correlations are found between answers to all the questions dealing with collaboration of team members in Scrum role, questions 5, 6, and 7 here in this table. And furthermore, satisfaction with the Scrum method, question 10, shows significant positive correlations of, uh, cor correlations of collaboration topics. This highlights the importance of a well-functioning team. The hypothesis drawn from this is that practicing good collaboration with fights of a self-organizing team will favorably influence the outlook on the other team members and the team atmosphere. Problems in collaboration with parts of the team might spread to collaboration in other areas. Comparisons to results of this survey um, that the to the to the one that was this one was that the questions were based on can be found in the paper. So let's talk about the second survey, the feedback survey, which was a more general feedback survey, right? Which was conducted at the end of the last sprint in order to measure students' perception perceptions of the course in retrospective. And also, this could be answered in a five-point Likert scale. So the answer, the results that we got back um, were that students felt confident in applying the Scrum methodology, question one, and agreed that running the course as a large programming project was sensible, question three. Question five about the effects of self-organization received an average score. The standard deviation is higher than one point, and this disparity was also evident in verbal feedback. Some students appreciated few lectures and a focus on self-organization, while others preferred more tutorials and structure. Reconciling these two sides in a software engineering course is an ongoing challenge. Even so, the focus of the course on self-organizing teams did not hinder the perceived learning results of students. So in conclusion, the surveys conducted throughout the course showed positive student attitudes towards self-organizing approaches. Furthermore, results did not significantly differ from those of more controlled course settings. However, one of the consequences of encouraging student teams to self-organize is the decrease in direct control over the executed processes in teams. When employing self-organizing teams, intense coaching of teams by tutors with extensive knowledge of agile methods and their explication is necessary. While this approach requires a definite increase in the amount of time spent on supervision and support of teams, it makes up for it by allowing students to discover the benefits of agile values for themselves. By being allowed to make mistakes and leveraging agile practices to overcome them, Students are able to discover and internalize the benefits of Agile values. Thank you very much for listening. Further details are described in our paper, uh, which is published in the Proceedings of the 2016 ASEE International Forum. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you very much.